When this man inherited an old, worn-down cabin from his grandfather, he was laughed at immensely. His siblings all got plenty of worth when the old man died, so naturally, they made fun of the man in his wooden check. But then he looked inside and got the last laugh. Family laughed at him for inheriting old cabin, but then they looked inside. Welcome to Amazing Truth Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all new. Now go to the story. The moment Andrew's grandfather passed away marked a sad turning point in his life. He had always been very close with the old man and mourned his passing deeply. His relatives, on the other hand, never paid much attention to the man and only seemed interested in their inheritance afterwards. Because of this, Andrew was not surprised to see his entire family already sitting in the notary's office when he got there himself. Andrew's grandfather was a very rich man, and his father, mother, brother, and sister were all too eager to get what was owed to them. But they wouldn't get the last lap. The old man had left all of them a long list of assets, and it was Andrew's family who heard their inheritance first. His father and mother both received half a million dollars. His brother got the vacation home that was worth about the same, and his sister got $100 in both family cars. And now it was Andrew's turn. What would his grandfather gift him after his demise? The notary looked at the humble young man with a serious face and said that the old man had something special planned for him. He reached into his desk drawer and pulled out a faded old envelope. Once the envelope was open, all people who attended leaned in, expecting a large sum of money. But what Andrew got was something totally unexpected. In this envelope, I leave you the old fishing cabin and the deeds to the small lake area surrounding it. The notary read out loud. Mocking laughter filled the room. After that, the individuals who laughed the hardest were Andrew's brother and sister. They agreed amongst each other to poke fun at Andrew forever because of it. The old fishing cabin was hardly worth anything, and the surrounding area, even though pretty, wasn't worth investing in at all. You got robbed, little brother, his sister said, grinning. Andrew wanted to argue with his smirky sister, but in his heart, he knew she was right. He visited the lakeside cabin many times before with his granddad, and besides some fishing gear and a leaking rooftop, there was nothing really there that was special. He walked to his car in disappointment. It was not like he wanted tons of money, but to get such a measly gift compared to his siblings, who never showed any interest in his grandfather, felt a bit like a stab in the back. Arriving at the property, he saw the scene he was expecting, a dilapidated building with broken windows. The sight of the worn-down cabin brought back memories for Andrew. He remembered when he was just a young boy fishing with his grandpa on the banks of the lake. Those fishing days were amazing, but the cabin already looked bad back then, and the passing of time had not done it much justice. With a sad look on his face, Andrew walked up to the cabin. He grabbed the doorknob and turned it counterclockwise. With a loud creak, the door opened up and revealed the cabin's insides. Its guts were even more saddening than the outside, just some fishing gear and the smell of rotting wood. Walking around, it opened up his mind for questioning. He questioned why his grandfather would offer him this. He understood very well that it held some sentiment, but it wasn't like he ever said he loved the place. Tell me what you want from me, Grandpa. Tell me what to do. As you might expect, the cabin remained silent, and his grandfather didn't come swooping in with wise words. Andrew got frustrated after a while, and even contemplated tearing the entire cabin down. The wooden building itself was worthless, but maybe he could do something with the ground the cabin stood on. The confused and frustrated grandson walked around the cabin multiple times, surveilling the land and weighing out his options. Yes, yes, this area is beautiful. Maybe a small hotel or bed breakfast could be built here over time. But where would I get the funding? Ideas formed in his head, but then, but then he snapped out of it. Andrew refused to believe that his grandfather left him this place for no reason. Demolishing it would be a stain on his legacy. There must be something special about this cabin that I'm not seeing, Andrew said out loud. The curious man walked back and forth, and after that, that's when he noticed something strange. Shortly after re-entering the cabin, Andrew made an amazing discovery inside one that would make him feel even more connected to his grandfather than ever before. He finally understood. 
Now, Andrew was over the moon with his unique inheritance, and the next day, his relatives would find out why. Seeing the newfound smile on their brother's face made the siblings want to mock him even more. They threw everything they had at him, but it didn't matter. All foul words bounced off Andrew like it was nothing. This was clearly not the same man they saw a few days prior. Andrew was extremely happy now. His brother and sister didn't understand what was going on, and even his parents, who refused to take part in this mockery, looked at their son with wondering eyes. What is it you saw at that cabin, Andrew? Tell us, they demanded. But Andrew just smiled again, refusing their request. After his denial, the family started doing what they did best, pushing his buttons until he eventually would give in. Every chance they got, they would bring up the cabin, but Andrew just smiled as he poured them tea. The ball was in his court now, and he loved to see them squabble. At the end of their visit, his family looked exhausted. His father and mother gave up halfway through, but both his brother and sister were persistent until the end. Eventually, Andrew said that they didn't deserve to know the cabin's secret. They never looked after or cared for Grandpa. But then something happened. The smirky tone of Andrew's family started to change. All of a sudden, the house that was once filled with words and mockery had now turned quiet. All of a sudden, Andrew saw his brother and sister looking at him with desperate eyes, begging him to show them what he found. It was a sight he had not seen before. He wanted to let them sit in their own jealousy for a while, but this change persuaded him to be a kind brother and son. He told his family that he would show them what he found but they had to keep it a secret. Hearing Andrew say those words made his relatives completely confused. So there was something hidden out there in that cabin. They agreed instantly and couldn't wait to visit the place. Andrew could only smile because his family still had no idea what kind of crazy situation would unfold at that cabin. Andrew told his family that if they wanted, they could leave right now. The cabin was only about an hour's drive from here, and there were plenty of hours left in the day. What are you waiting for? Grab your gear and meet me outside. It's time to go. Andrew said, smiling. His relatives were still a bit hesitant about the whole situation. They were really curious about this mysterious cabin, but Andrew's confidence in his willingness to help all of a sudden spiked their nerves a lot. All right, we'll meet you outside in about five minutes. Sister eventually said, frowning. After five minutes, Andrew waited by his dirty dune buggy for his family to join him and that's when he saw the obnoxious side of his family once more. His sister arrived in one of the family's red, shiny sports cars, and his brother wore the most lavish coat he ever saw in his life. All their wealth and posh things were given to them, stuff bought because of Grandpa's hard work. It was infuriating, but they would soon be put down a peg, Andrew thought to himself. In contrast to his family, Andrew looked plain, but he still had that unwavering smile on his face. They all arrived at the lake cabin together. Andrew parked his car closest, and his siblings parked their revoltingly expensive cars close behind him. Andrew's sister immediately stepped in some feces of unknown origin, and that amused him. But when they looked at the cabin, they said what Andrew had expected. Is this it? Looking at their disappointed faces was just an appetizer for Andrew's payback. The main course was waiting for them inside. Don't worry, you will see soon enough, Andrew proclaimed. They walked around the building a couple of times just to add tension to the situation, and it worked just as expected. His sister cracked first, closely followed by his brother and parent. Come on, man, this is not why we came here. What is the big secret? Andrew could hardly hold in his laughter. But as amusing as this all was, he knew that the time for delay was over. It was time for the inside. They were now all standing in front of the cabin. This is it. Are all of you ready to witness something extraordinary? He asked his family. They all nodded together in silence. Andrew fiddled around in his side pocket and pulled out a rusty old key. He approached the front door and turned the key slowly. Andrew opened the door slowly, revealing the inside of the wooden cabin. After that, he invited his family to enter the building first. He was eager to see their response. After all, they went in blind and were expecting to see something amazing right away, but they had no idea what kind of mystery awaited them. 
His family walked around the insides of the cabin a couple of times, but ended up more confused than when they came in. They only saw grandfather's fishing gear in the corner, a hardly functional table, and a small rug. What's so special about this place, Andrew? Tell us now. Andrew admitted to them that at first he thought the same thing. When you walk through here, it's just an empty cabin with a bad smell and some of Grandpa's old stuff, right? Well, if you think that, you are wrong because there is more to this building than you might think. Look carefully. Andrew started walking around the room himself, but in contrast to his family, he did so much more intently. He pressed his feet into the floor hard, stomping with every step. What are you doing, little brother? His sister asked him, confused, but Andrew just told her to keep quiet and listen. The sound of his stomping feet was the same everywhere he went, just a hard and annoying sound throughout. But when he reached the corner of the room, the place where the rug was, the sound changed. It went from a short, muted thump to a loud, hollow sound. What is this? Andrew started smiling again as he gazed upon the faces of his relatives. He had them on the edge of their seats, Edward crouched down next to the rug and grabbed one corner before rolling it up diagonally. By doing so, he uncovered a large hatch, big enough for a person to climb through. His sister told Andrew that she was starting to doubt him, but after seeing this hatch, her interest was definitely piqued once more. What is down there, little brother? Hidden treasure? The smirky woman looked down into the dark hole and saw a ladder leading downwards. Andrew had brought a backpack with him, and now it was time to open it. Out of it, he pulled four identical flashlights. He had already predicted that they would eventually come here. So he went over to the hardware store to prepare. Andrew turned each of them on and passed them around with their flashlight at the ready. All four of Andrew's relatives headed down the dark set of stairs. The room smelled old and musky, not the place where people would like hang around, Andrew's brother said snobbily but that attitude faded instantly when he saw the room he walked into. All of their eyes turned large at the same time. They turned towards Andrew, and he could see the sense of wonder on their faces. Are you kidding me? His sister said. But Andrew wasn't kidding at all. This was extremely serious. I told you so, but you all didn't believe me, he said, laughing. The area they stood was an enormous underground storage space, at least ten times the size of the cabin above ground. It was not made out of wood, but built from strong, durable concrete, and it was filled to the brim with valuable historical artifacts. The reason for that was no coincidence. Andrew's grandpa was a well-known collector and trader of historical artifacts. In fact, his entire fortune, the one that his family relied on, was cultivated by this career, and it appeared that all of his work was stored in this secretive place. That included some well-known historical gems. His grandfather owned Cleopatra's staff, the sword of Alexander the Great, and even a piece of robe that was apparently owned by Jesus Christ himself. And to Andrew's surprise, it all seemed to be stored in this unexpected location. Andrew shared the historical love with his grandfather, so the sight of this made him cry. Yes, Andrew saw the emotional value in each and every item inside this room, Unfortunately, his family did not share this outlook. They only saw the dollar bills these items could provide them. There must be millions of dollars in this room just collecting dust, his brother said with a jealous look. And that's when they all asked the same question at pretty much the same time. What are you going to do with all the money these objects will bring you? Andrew expected this remark. That was why he didn't want them to come in the first place. They simply wouldn't understand. Sorry guys, but I am not going to sell a single thing in this entire storage facility," Andrew declared. His family looked at him like they had seen a ghost. They were like vultures hovering over the objects for their value, but not a single cent would go their way, because Andrew had a different plan for this place. He was going to turn this site into a museum. All of his grandpa's most prized possessions were in this place, and they would stay that way. Within half a year, Andrew had built a small but breathtaking museum next to the cabin. It had a lot of glass, so the beautiful environment was part of the design. The cabin he kept as it was, ugly, rotten, and smelling like wet clothes and fish. It was the way his grandfather liked it. The museum wasn't visited by tons of people. 
that was not what his grandfather wanted. The raw nature of this place did not need to be disturbed that much. No, Andrew only let a handful of enthusiasts visit the site on an appointment basis only. That way, they could appreciate his grandfather's work and all its glory. And Andrew just sat on his simple folding chair in front of the wooden cabin he loved so much because it belonged to his grandpa. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.